You shouldn't have to be in company with a gatekeeper to be treated fairly. You should not have to have a gatekeeper on your team to make a livable wage off of music that is making people billionaires. So Beyonce has been trending lately, not for Texas Hold'em, but for allegedly stealing from songwriters and other artists. And apparently this is not the first time she has been called out for stealing from other creatives. But things took a different turn recently when songwriter and activist Tiffany Red joined the the conversation about how Beyonce is literally stealing songwriters' livelihoods by not paying them what they're worth. Beyonce could absolutely reform Parkwood's business practices. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's a choice to take 25% of publishing that you didn't earn. That's wage theft. That's what that is. That's bullying. That's abuse of power. That is the power dynamic. That's the gun. However, it seems like these guys have had enough of Beyonce stealing from them and they want to have their day in court. And of course, Beyonce's team is threatening to counter sue for breach of contract because they are supposedly under ironclad NDAs. The reason why people who work for Beyonce don't talk is because they're all on NDAs. Because that's also how she works. She silences people so that nobody can speak. I'm not a writer that's written for Beyonce. Chile, if all of this is true, it means Beyonce built her billion dollar empire off other people's free labor. So y'all better sit tight because this tea is piping hot. Songwriter and activist Tiffany Red recently slammed Beyonce for stealing from songwriters and trying to rip them off their publishing rights. For those who don't know, Tiffany Red has been in the songwriting business for almost 20 years and has the Grammy and other awards to show for it. But she had to walk away because of how toxic the industry is and how much these artists were willing to cheat their way to stardom. Tiffany didn't speak on Beyonce alone. Matter of fact, she was calling out the entire industry. But then she specifically mentioned some of y'all's faves like Zendaya, Tamar Braxton, and Sevane Streeter for faking writing credits and stealing from songwriters. So in case you were wondering what this publishing rights and whatnot entails, hang on a minute, let's break it down. So when artists put out a song or an album, there are usually many people behind the scenes who work to make that happen. For example, you have songwriters, producers, sound engineers, background vocalists, video directors, it's a whole ecosystem. So you would expect that everyone involved in this process should get their share of the pie when the big bucks arrive. But that's not usually the case. These artists are out here trying to screw everybody over, especially the songwriters that literally write the songs y'all wind your bodies and make babies to. And of course, one of the most notorious artists that do this is Beyonce. You see, this is not the first time Beyonce has been called out for stealing from other creatives. So back in 2013, Beyonce gagged everyone when she released Bowdown, one of the few songs where she used the B word. Now, Bowdown was a hit, no doubt. However, the truth is that it wasn't originally written for Beyonce. Songwriting Brothers Rock City revealed in a podcast that they wrote the song in under nine minutes, and it was originally written for Rihanna. However, when they pitched it to Riri, she said she wasn't feeling it, so the song landed on Beyonce's lap. Now, what's crazy about this story is that when the song was released, Bay faced a lot of backlash for taking things too far. However, when she was asked what inspired her to write the song, she said she woke up with a voice in her head that just wouldn't stop chanting the lyrics of the song to her until she was forced to get in the booth and get it out of her system. The reason I put out Bow Down is because I woke up, I went into the studio, I had a chant in my head. It was aggressive. It was angry. It wasn't the Beyonce that wakes up every morning. It was the Beyonce that was angry. It was the Beyonce that felt the need to defend herself. And if the song never comes out, okay, I said it. And I listened to it after I finished and I said, this is hot. I'm gonna put it out. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm gonna just put it out. People like it. Great. They don't. They don't. Now, obviously that's a bald faced lie because she never even wrote the song, but that's not the only time she has lied and refused to acknowledge the writers who wrote her songs. Neo had a similar experience where he gave Beyonce a song and she tried to pass it off like she was the one who wrote it and still didn't pay him well enough for it. You know Beyonce's jam, Irreplaceable? Well, it turns out Neo actually wrote the song and it was originally meant for him. However, he said he realized some of the lyrics would be a offensive to his female fans, and it might be better if a woman sang it. Initially, I wrote it to, to sing it myself. Like right, it. right. But um, I realized in the lyrics of this record that, well, first and foremost, uh, a good 90% of my fan base was female. And if I were to say, 
to my female fan base. I can have another you in a minute. Matter of fact, she'll be here in a minute. So he passed it on to Beyonce and she tweaked it a little to make it hers. And boy, did she own it. That would have been a cute little story if everyone had acted right. However, Nao later said he regretted giving out that song because he never got the recognition or payment he deserved for the song. Are there times nuts yet. that you write songs for people and they want to take credit for it and act like you didn't write it because they want to make it seem like I did this? <sighs> That, that that that's happened before. Are you talking about Beyonce, <laughs> Angela Yee over there? Hey, are you just gonna say Charlamagne's mom's name? What? Yeah, I'm a Pinkett Smith one. But I'm sure that. Talk. But no, yeah, let's be real. I'm sure that happens <laughs> a lot, not just with Irreplaceable. I'm sure this happened a lot of times with artists because they put a song out. People feel like, oh, she's singing from the heart. She's singing about, you know, something that she experienced, or he's singing about something that he experienced. So they want to make it seem like they wrote it themselves. What's crazy is as soon as Bay's fans heard Nao say that, they descended on him and started dragging him for film. When Nao saw the hate comments, he tried to defend himself by saying, I ate my dude, send me the link to where I said anything disrespectful about Beyonce, please. Dying to hear this. Then, when he heard the so-called diss, he said, Just heard the audio where I supposedly dissed Beyonce. Are y'all serious? Did you even listen to what I said? I said I originally wrote the song for me. That's true, so of course, I didn't want to give it away originally. It was for me. Once I realized how the song comes across if sung by a guy, that's when I decided to give it away. How is that dissing Beyonce? Beyonce. However, at some point, Nao just realized he was never going to stop getting bullied by the Bayhive if he continued to entertain them. So bro just said, you know what, at first I was apologetic about what the hacker said. Now that I heard the audio myself, not so much. Y'all should listen a little harder before you start dissing people, it makes you look real dumb. Then he signed out with, last time y'all will ever get any of my time or attention. Much love to my fans and fam F the idiots and haters. In fact, Beyonce allegedly stole some of the songs she performed during her renaissance tour. A man of somebody who is a writer and producer on Renaissance, okay? The record is one of y'all faves. The song was written six years before it got to Beyonce. She got 25% of the song. I've talked to another, another writer who wrote and sang on one of your favorite songs. Credit not right, all kind of shit fucked up. His business still isn't handled. Beyonce was on tour last year with that record, with that person's vocals, all that. It's crazy because people always ask artists, oh, well, why don't you just speak up? And according to Tiffany, this right here is the reason why they can't speak up. She said the main reason why they can't fight for themselves is because Queen Bay has them under ironclad NDAs. Like, there isn't even any negotiation. It's just, we'll take your publishing rights and that's it. End of story. But Tiffany didn't stop there. She said the reason why Beyonce's issue cuts even deeper is that she has built her entire brand around black power and black excellence. But it ain't no black power when you're cheating folks out of their hard-earned money and taking food out of their mouths. It's just capitalism. What burns me up the most about Beyonce, and this is why I'm speaking about her specifically, is because Beyonce is Queen B. Beyonce is a Black artist. Beyonce represents Black excellent, black, black excellence. Beyonce's team, like the people who work with her, these writers that I'm talking about that are exploited, are they're us. The reason why I called out Beyonce is because Beyonce is the Michael Jackson of our generation. And so if there's anybody that could reshape the precedent, if there's anybody that could influence the industry that had the power and the money and the cultural like thing to say, you know what y'all, you're right. These songwriters have been out here. We've been in the street, literally. I have been in the street. Now, the thing about Bay is that every time she has been accused of stealing from other creatives in the past, she just explained it away as inspiration. Like one time, Belgian choreographer Anne Teresa de Kiersmaker told a radio station that Bay stole from two of her works for the dance moves she used for the choreography in her music video for Countdown. The works in question were Anne's Octorland from 1990 and her Rosas Danced Rosas from 1983. In the interview, Anne said, I'm not mad, but this is plagiarism. This is stealing. 
Then she said, it's a bit rude. What's rude about the it that they don't even bother about hiding it? Because Beyonce didn't just copy dance moves from Rosas Dunst Rosas. She allegedly also copied the costumes, the set, and even some specific shots resemble a film of the dance made by Thierry Demay. In response, Beyonce put out a statement that said, clearly, the ballet Rosas Dunst Rosas was one of many references for my video, Countdown. It was one of the inspirations used to bring the feel and look of the song to life. Anne was actually nice with her response because she was basically like, copying is not necessarily a bad thing. Just do it the right way and follow the right protocol. She responded, Beyonce is not the worst copycat. She sings and dances very well and she has good taste. On the other hand, there are protocols and consequences to such actions and I can't imagine she and her team are not aware of it. And before y'all, Bayhive come for anyone for slandering your queen, hear what Tiffany has to say. To have to learn how to um, perceive accountability way better because accountability is not a negative thing. Accountability is an opportunity to grow. Accountability is an opportunity to evolve. So it's not about just throwing dirt on Beyonce's name, it's about accountability. And Chili, that accountability may be a little more than Beyonce is used to because folks are tired of working and working and not getting paid or recognized for their hard work. So it looks like they may be taking things a step further and dragging Queen Bey to court to collect their money. But y'all don't get it messed up. It's not that no one has ever tried to take things to that level with Beyonce. Remember Blue Cantrell? Well, in her prime, Blue was really rocking the R&B world. Like in the early 2000s, Blue Blue had everyone in a chokehold with hits upon hits, but things started going south for her when she confronted Beyonce about stealing her style and plagiarizing her work. For example, Beyonce's Baby Boy sounded a lot like Blue's Breathe, and that's just one example. But all of a sudden, Blue disappeared from the mainstream, and a lot of people felt like this ad had something to do with her feud with Beyonce. Strangely, Blue was spotted at some point running through the streets of Santa Monica, ranting about people who were trying to unalive her through toxic gas exposure. Police had to intervene and Blue had to be taken to a facility to receive treatment. It was that bad. After that incident, we never really saw much of Blue in the industry again. However, people did wonder if Blue was trying to pass a message across all along. Because as y'all know, some people in the industry have the power to make people disappear like that. That's why when you see people not speaking up against industry elites like Beyonce, it's because they know what happens to people who do speak up. But that's not even stopping these writers this time because when I tell you, they're fed up. However, y'all know how the Carters never let any anything stain their white. Word on the street is that Bay's people have contacted these guys and might press charges against them for defamation and breach of contract. As we speak, there might even already be lawyers from both sides negotiating and deals being made behind the scenes. We probably won't know until much later. But in the meantime, I want y'all to share your thoughts on how you think this will play out. Will Beyonce finally accept responsibility for her actions? Or will she try to shut these guys up for good? Sound off in the comments below and don't forget to check out this next video.